to the Queen Anne's County Board, Educa Board Education work sessions for March the 10th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you have a, a bill of a time to look at our minutes, both for March the 3rd, open and closed. Has everybody had a chance to review them? Mm -hmm. I have a motion. So moved. Second. I have no discussion. Uh, hey, Helen. Uh, Sorry. We are approving the minutes for March the 3rd, open and closed. You've had a chance to look at them? Yes. Got a motion and second. Can I call for uh, call? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Okay, moving on, Dr. Kane, full day hybrid. Absolutely. So today parents were notified that we will start a full day um, hybrid schedule, still on the AABB rotations, full day starting March the 22nd. Principals will be sending out the, agenda, the uh, schedules to families next week, and we are going to follow the same tiers for bus schedules, tier one, tier two, high schools, everybody is still going to be on the same schedule. That means that pre-K students will go back to their regular half day uh, schedule. So it will be a schedule as if it were pre-COVID. Um, and we are prepared with meal service and it'll be great to have some hot meals again. Uh, we are prepared with transportation. We're prepared with PPE. Our principals are working with their teams to finalize some some rotations for lunches and we are we are preparing and and I think that we'll, we we will be ready no ifs ands or buts about it we met with all principals and ANS today and we are all in agreement that we'll be ready for March 22nd well as one board member I want to thank you and your staff our for, teams for, are and awesome your, and, your, and your principals for getting that done um, I, I some now we have some students going four half days. It's Correct. Like, some students are on four day schedules. Four day schedules. Mm -hmm. Will they then go to back to AABB or will we have enough space to do? Right. So principals are working on individual situations because it's not grand numbers of students that are okay. doing that. Our goal for the most part at this point is to get them in for full days. And so that's going to mean that and it's already started to happen. Some parents are enrolling their kids, bringing their children back. And so I don't know if we'll be able to manage that four day day schedule uh, for students. So principals are, are aware and they are working with those families on that. But do, do every parent have the option to ask the principal, can I have my child there four days? Is that how it works? Or just it's, certain... not, it's not going to work that okay. way simply because we will go over capacity. Right. Um, but when we looked at things on the on the two hour early dismissal days, the hybrid schedule. There were some students who were not able to access the internet. There were some students that just really, really needed some additional support and principals were able to work with those families to see that they got that. And I'm I have left it to them. So the that's, a, that's a principal decision to, case by yep, case. They're looking at their capacity on buses, they're looking at their capacity in cafeterias, they're looking at their staffing and all of those things to see if they will be able to continue that. Okay, thank you. I know Governor Hoover spoke yesterday, which to me didn't change too much because our biggest thing is social distancing. I don't care if you're three feet, you got to be zero. If we, if by some chance before the, the time at the end of the year, he lifted the mandates of social distancing, would we be prepared to open up schools on a five day as normal? If, 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 he, he, if, he, lists, if he lists lifts social distancing, then that means everybody can come back. Okay. I would wait for guidance from MSDE. Mm -hmm. I had no, you know, a foreknowledge that we were going to get the information that we got yesterday, so we get it just like everybody else gets it. In fact, we were in a meeting <laughs> when, it, when it was out, so we might have been a little bit later than everybody else. Um, 
Um, so we'll, we'll play that one as, as it rolls out. If he says everybody come back, then guess what? Everybody's coming back. Okay, because I just, like you said, you know, what you, you don't find as on a day-to-day -day basis, but we are prepared. If it, I mean, then if the social distancing was lifted, then we're prepared to do it. We could go back to a... And that means As I that quote, regular school day, five days, full days, everything. That's what that would mean. Well, thank you. Unless somebody says something different. Okay. I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. So with this full day, if someone elected to stay virtual, can they change now? They can. They can still stay virtual. Uh, they will be. They will not have a the same small groups, just like I mentioned last week, that they have in the afternoon. That's not going to happen specifically with the teacher because the teacher is going to be teaching all day. Mm -hmm. So, but their children still may remain virtual. But if they elect to come back now, it's two oh, full days. Absolutely. Do they have that option? Yep. Okay. That is occurring right now. So if that happens and you. Is there a possibility you will have to move some students to to A from B to make the balance work? It is a, a likelihood that that will happen. We are trying our best to keep the cohorts together mm -hmm. uh, because they have been traveling together and it's easier to do contact tracing and that sort of thing. So we are trying to keep cohorts together at this point. Okay. And then, of course, sports. Everybody wants to know what's sports. Um, so has has any guidance come out from MP? No. Uh, yeah. Everybody wants to know about athletics and, and whether or not. We're looking at exactly what the governor said, 50% capacity. Uh, we are, you know, part of Bayside Conference, mm -hmm. and so we like to make some decisions together. There is a meeting that will happen on Friday, okay. and so I will not be issuing any guidance with regard to athletics until the conference has met. Okay. And I have, and I have guidance. I also have superintendent's meeting, and Dr. Salmon will be joining us on Friday for that, as she generally does. And uh, there may be some additional guidance from that. So once we get guidance with regard to athletics, we will make sure that the public is aware. Okay. And then the last thing, um, there's a big push about questioning adding Wednesdays into the mix mm -hmm. instead of having an asynchronous day. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? So right now we are going to keep our cohorts the same, A days and B days, and we are one step at a time. And I know families are in having whiplash as one parent it described it with regard to the changes that are happening with the schedule. But at this point, we are going to keep the Wednesdays just like they are and we're going to continue with the A day and the B day cohort. Okay. And then, of course, I asked this earlier about prom. There's a lot of discussion about proms and all that. No decisions have been made yet. We, we have not given any direction to students, staff, parents, or anything like that with regard to prom. We do have a high school committee next week, and it will come up. We discussed it previous at our last high school committee, but we did not have the same guidance that we had right mm -hmm. now. And at that point, there was no point because the guidelines were 250 or 50 percent, whichever is less, capacity for indoor. Yep. So we could not do a prom. So we'll have that on the table uh, this week, okay. next week when we meet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other members? Helen? Well, it's just related to it. Uh, says part of Governor Hogan, he, he lifted the travel restrictions uh, with the quarantine and the COVID test required. Is that the same then for, for the school system? Correct. Effective 5 o'clock on Friday, I believe. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, no, no question, Okay. And I think the one thing, too, is questions, because so there will be some changes when we go to this, I think, should be directed to the principals. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where the principals, base, right, principals or, or are assigned. working the schedules. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that you would, if you have an issue with Centerville Middle or Mattapique or whatever, that's the where to direct the, the first place to go. Correct. If there's a change and you have a question for parents, that would be where to go. Correct. Okay. Any other things? Well, okay, moving forward. So everybody knows that it's been out. Um, so we're going to be AAB day, full days. Uh, next thing is operating budget. We do not have a, Ms., uh, as Ms. Towers comes forward, we do not have an additional presentation, mm -hmm. um, but we certainly are happy to respond to any questions that you might have. We did check the question document, the question sheet. Um, we had an opportunity, uh, Mr. Smith and executive team met with county commissioners or um, Todd Mon and uh, Mr. Wilson on yesterday and the CFO and um, 
you know, they, they understand where we are. We'll do our presentation, our budget presentation on April the 6th. Um, the board hopefully will have decided upon, you know, approved a budget for the school system that we can present to the commissioners on April 6th. Mm -hmm. Well, the one question I got, and I guess it, it, it got spurred my interest yesterday when we started talking about money. Um, last year, it, it looks like to me we had from state $38,129,000. This year, if I add up on scenario two, which I'm using, uh, we have, well, the state foundation money is thirty-two million six fifty-four, mm -hmm. and then the other things plus the big number is the declining enrollment grant three million comes to three million seven hundred fifty-four thousand dollars. If I add those two numbers up, it's less than we got last year. Correct. Why? Under the state foundation funds, they moved the. Um, declining enrollment grant to where it says the state blueprint funds. So um, a couple weeks ago, we had the handout that tied out to each individual document. So if you take a look at document number two. Yeah, I don't have that with me, though, I might have it. Oh. <clears throat> is, it, is, it, is it in that it, same packet there? What, what, which one was that? Oh, it was, it was um, this one that had the difference in, that had the different scenarios and there were numbers beside each scenario and it had a work paper. Ms. Hey, Harper, I think you were out there I supposed to scan it to you. She's looking, yeah, I've got that. that. Okay. That's okay. Mrs. Tower, that's is that the mail to me tomorrow if you don't course. mind? Is number awesome. two, that, is that the state allocation? Is that the sheet you're looking at now? Correct. Okay. I think I have an so it's just where they reclassify it because they they have a new section called blueprint. So they move some of the state foundation that was included in there last year down below. So that's why it looks like there's Three. a huge Three. difference. Three. I can pull up here too the calculations for 21. So in here it says total four four point nine million. So that that's going to give us the same amount of money from the state. Right, that 4.9 includes some restricted funds. Mm -hmm. But did it Don't include in our money. last year? What, what I'm, I guess what the simple question is, rather than getting the, we need details. Yes. The county is being asked to give us the same amount of money as last year to be held harmless, plus a dollar. Yes. We have declining enrollment only because of the COVID thing. Is the state giving us the same amount of money as last year? I'll have to take a look and take a look at the exact calculation. And I'm not, I'm not worried about $1,000. I'm worried about right. millions. Right. It's where they're reclassifying it. So when you look at scenario two, under the 32, 000, or 32 million 654, 327, mm -hmm. and then if you look right underneath that declining enrollment grant, mm -hmm. You would have seen that number in our foundation number. Mm -hmm. Instead, because we had declining enrollment, they moved it down to your state blueprint funds. So if you take, if you add those up compared to last year, it comes within, I would say, a half million. A, a good portion of that was the, the tutoring okay. that we received. If you look at, um, well, here, here's my, and maybe I'm looking at something wrong. I'm looking at the on scenario two. Mm -hmm. 32 million 654 mm -hmm. for state aid. Yes. Then I'm looking at 3 million 754 for um, state blueprint funds unrestricted. Mm -hmm. I add those two together. I come up with 36 million 408 thousand dollars. I look at my book from last year. Yes. And I see state approved 38 128. That's the difference of close to two million dollars. Yes. Well, if the state's $2 million less than last year, that's really hurting our budget. Correct. And when we start looking at, which we have to go in for our discussion, this fund balance stuff and the ASBIC fund for health, I mean, that's it right there. When you talk 650 and one and a half million dollars, the state is giving us $2 million, or not exactly, but close to $2 million less than last year, it looks like to me, it, with, with looking at those numbers. Is that true? Right, when you take a look at both, um the blueprint funds and both the, the foundation funds, you add those two together, compare it to last year, you are correct on that. They did have um, added under, if you look at page th or three, you see the tutoring of the 599. Mm -hmm. There's some things that they moved to restrict it to as well. And so 
so instead of operating, it's now restricted. Okay. I mean, I so, so I think what Ms. Towers is saying to you is that there are funds that are not included, that are not showing in the 32 million and the 3.7 million that we did get from the state. It's just that it was moved from unrestricted to restricted. Restricted, and it's adding up to the same, close to the same amount of money. I'll have to do the calculation well, and let you know. One other thing sure. it gets me is, you know, we're asking for the county to go well over maintenance effort, where what the scenario that's been proposed to us is taking 650,000 out of fund balance and another million point five or six out of ESMIC, which are rea which I have a problem with being one time reoccurring costs, not one time. And then the state, if they're not pony up the same, it's just one thing after another, just putting this thing behind a yes. eight ball to me. It, it, feel, it feels like they're pushing it to the county. Well, oh, they always do that. But I mean, it's just, you know, when you ask so. the county to sit there and fund the same as last year, all I'm saying is the state should be doing, if you're going to ask somebody to do that, you should do the same as what you're asking somebody else to do. I agree. That's if not, it's unfeigned it mandates. If I may interject mm -hmm. as well, this $3 million declining enrollment grant, that could be a one-time grant that we'll never be able to get back again. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that the county commissioners are looking at that in the same vein, that that would be something they would have to come up with subsequently mm -hmm. in 23 and maybe 24. So that's kind of, that's very, it's making me a little cautious to think that this is not going to be given to us again next year. And or again, put in restrictive where it's only allocated for certain things. So it's, it's kind of daunting. And if we did not qualify for that declining enrollment grant, that's just based upon your enrollment drops and hopes that we would see an increase in foundation then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always said people have more, you know, everybody complained about in the, when we had growth. Growth is a lot easier to deal with than declining enrollment because you still have the same cost to open the doors, except, you know, and, and, you know one teacher's not 25 students. It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. Okay, any other, anybody else have? I mean, because, you know, what's going on is right now is Dr. Kane's presented us with a budget that we've got to go over. Uh, the other heartburn I have is using a fund balance of 650 that, to me, is going to be a rare current cost, but we're pulling out of a one-time thing. And the ESMIC Healthcare Trust of a million five, pulling that out. Um, for reoccurring costs. Both of them I have a problem with. Now, the health care trust, is that we can get that money? I mean, we I know you had talked that you know, we're tied in with the county and we're tied, that money can be pulled out and we can use it at our discretion? Well, it, it's we're still in discussion with that, um, with the county as well as with ESMEC. So there's no um, the final approval on that. So we don't even know if we could use that money. No, but um, we have asked. Um, in January for uh, both the organizations just to have it as an item for discussion. In January? It, we, we, this coming we January? Did. No, we, we, we did. We asked. Oh, we January. asked for that, but they haven't, it hasn't been resolved. Right. We're still, we're still working on it, yes. So, can I ask, yeah. if you don't mind, um, I too am leery of using fund balance. Um, I would I would support scenario number two. I would ask though that the on the expenditure side the two percent increase for employees at the top of the scale be removed and thereby taking the fund balance down to two hundred forty four thousand nine seventy one. That would be the only thing that I would recommend if we were going to move forward with number two. But you're, you still be using the fund balance and using the ESPEC money. Yes, well, it would lower the fund balance because who knows when we may need that later on in June when we're having to renegotiate all of this. But right, that, right off the top, I would, I would, I would suggest that. And, and, and to your point, this uh, we still are in, in negotiations, and that was just a placeholder amount. Correct. Yes. Correct. So that placeholder amount, you're looking to decrease that, yes. if I understand. Yes. That's just my recommendation. So what, so what that says is because we are still in negotiations and we've settled on nothing, you want to reduce the package up for compensation from uh, the 2.7 to about 2.3. The To keep the step in 1%, 
Well, we can't say step in 1% particularly. We can say that the amount of compensation would be 2.3. And okay, however, I understand. Out, you know what I mean? I understand. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes, I would keep the 2.3. I, I, yeah, I think it's misleading. When, I mean, that's how that number comes up. But when employee compensation can be a various different ways when, right. going to, when, when the negotiations get done. But, I, you know, I, I just look at, we can balance this budget. We can't balance it. We can make this budget work this year. But we're taking over $2 million of putting in reoccurring cost for one time money we're pulling out of somewhere. And I know last year we had we had negotiated, or we, had, we were on our last year of our contract, and we pulled, I think, 250 out, plus a furlough day. Now we're getting, you know, and then, but pulling furlough days, just borrowing money, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And uh, I think this is a comeback to bite this board next year and future boards if this this if this kept up and I don't know I don't I have a problem as a single person just one person I me have a problem with that. Well, Mr. Smith, this has been going on for years. I mean, this is going back to my first year, you know, in 2012, 2013. This goes back to even further back to then. So um, we just have to make it do. We have to be I have to honor any any agreement with our uh, negotiated agreements with the units and keeping at least. The placeholder of 2.3, I think, is is reasonable. But well, we have to honor our agreement if it's negotiated in good faith. If we get adequate funding, well, all of it is inadequate funding, and, sir. And and, and and funding from one-time reserves to me is not adequate funding because we're just. I mean, I I would want to run a business by you know borrowing money, having a reoccurring cost, uh, and you know if it's a one-time cost for employee compensation, I, I can I can understand that. But for a reoccurring cost. To me, it's not good practice, and somebody else can explain to me why it is. I don't know. You're not going to hear Ms. Towers or Dr. Kane say it's a good practice, because <laughs> the first year I got here and I realized that's what was going on, I thought I'm in the twilight zone. Understand. Um, but, I, but I do recognize that that is how this district has been able to zero balance uh, on an annual basis. We, uh, we've experienced a little more savings over the past year than we had before, so we grew the fund balance. So it has not come back to bite us, as, as you say, yeah. um, and, and really, exactly. Um, I, I anticipate that there will be some savings savings this year we have not been able to get any calculation on that at this point but you know what you're looking at and, and I, I hear what you're saying what you're looking at is a couple of things that you're gonna there's only a couple of areas that you can work with here you're looking at fund balance so there you're looking at the on the expenditure side you're looking at the number of positions that we're going to reduce and we're looking at the ESMIC health care trust which we do not know if we're going to be able to use um, so there's only a couple of areas that you can that you have any leeway with that's going to net you, you know, millions of dollars. No, I mean, I mean, and the the big number is employee compensation, and, and compensation. is two point three million dollars. I mean, that that's that's the big mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing in in this scenario. We're already over, not over, but asking for over a million dollars more than maintenance effort from last year from the county. So it's just, I mean, and I'm going to use the word employee compensation. It might not be a percent or a step. It could be some other means. And, and that is given because yeah. we have not finalized negotiations. And to your point, I do want to say that the estimates that we are using are from the county and you received mm -hmm. yesterday as well. So. That was, you know, that was from the county. We didn't pull that out of thin air. No, I, 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 I'm not, you know, I, the, I'm not as much worried about asking the county for the money, or what we're doing right there. If they have it, not have it. it it's their discretion to fund them, and they, they need to fund us, and they always have in the past. I want to thank the, the citizens. I mean, this, this board's been funded well, but using the fund balance of 650 and the ESMIC of 1.5, and you walked into this problem, I, you know, it's just to me not not because it's last year we what used two fifty. Yes, we we two thirty four, but we budgeted, didn't. Right, we budgeted two fifty, but we actually we did. had savings and that increased the fund balance by one point four. Okay, so actually didn't get used. Correct. It didn't get used, and if we're going to and if we have that balance and use it for a one time cost, I can I can live with that. We save money, we put it back in on a one time. But when it comes to be a reoccurring cost, and I know compensation normally is a reoccurring cost because 
you give somebody a raise, it compounds. I don't know if we can do that this year. And that's my concern using these numbers. I'm not just, if we can even use these numbers. That's that's my... Well, again, Mr. Smith, as Ms. Tower said, if there is any kind of you know, leftover savings from this year, then the fund balance again would not be used. So it's all a matter, it's, it's a waiting game right at this point. It, it wouldn't be, but <laughs> what, what about the ASMIC trust of a million five? How are we gonna pay that next year? We well, can we can always hope that the county commissioners will increase their budget. And, and so also just so I'm clear, it, it's kind of like we're gambling, right? Yes. We're, we're gonna fund from a, what should be like a one-time cost as you're saying. We're funding the raise for the, the teachers, which is gonna be recurring in the future. Is that what we're, we're looking at here? Oh, and if, we're gonna fund yeah. it with something that we may not know is going to be refund or the, you know replenished over the coming year, but we're still gonna be responsible because you can't take that pay raise away, obviously, once it's done. So, and like you said, we can hope and we might expect that kind of thing. So if the worst case scenario is we got 50 bucks, you know, in the fund balance next year at this time, is that what you're saying? We got to go to the commissioners and say we got to, or we got to cut something else? We'd have to cut, we'd have to cut, do major cuts next year. If we had, if we had to, if we didn't use the 650 next year and a million five, we'd have to cut $2 million before we did anything next year. I mean, and that's cutting. And if we have um, an employee at, I'm just going to use 75,000. Divide two million into seventy, you know, by seventy-five thousand. That's how many employees we would be, you know, twenty-five, thirty. Put my quick math. People we could be losing. Right. So, uh, just to be clear, if if we did not um, use, and we do have savings above and beyond the six hundred and fifty in fund balance. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if we would have to fund another six hundred and fifty because that's already there. So if you had to use it, then you'd be using it. But you reduce that from the savings that you're going to earn from this year. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you would say, oh my gosh, we got to cut now $2 million or even 650 because you already have that in there. But but if we have a year that we don't have a fund balance, you know. Yeah, I mean, we could suppose out for several years. I just, could. You know, if it's a one-time cost, I, I would say if we have the ability to do it and, and bridge a gap for a year for that, I just think, and as you said, if you, when you first started here, if this happened and you were a little shocked that that's how it was being done, last year when I saw 250 in a furlough day, I was shocked, and now I'm seeing 650 in a million five, I'm shocker. Or happy you want to say it. And <laughs> if I can add to this too, the other variance here would be enrollment, because we saw that huge decrease of 334. And what is the 930 count gonna look like? Are, are, are we gonna get those students back? So when, that's the unknown too that you're gambling on that you talked about as well. Too. If we get, we hope to get them back. Exactly. If we don't exactly. go back, then it's going to put us farther in the hole because this, the county and the state are holding us harmless this year. But next year, they might not if we we're supposed to be at, I don't know, pick a round number, 78, and we end up at 76, 100 kids, students. You know, that could be a, another uh, issue. So I, this is what happens, sir. We don't have the students come back. We don't have the funding. Our class sizes are going to go from the 15 to 20. They're going to go to 25 to 30 because we're going to lose positions to make this balance. I mean, that's what happened last year. I mean, that, that is the reality of not having enough funding. Right now, we can't do anything about that. All we are being asked to do is to send something over to the county commissioners now for them to negotiate their budget out and then give it back to us, hand it back to us, and where we will have to hash it at that time. Mm -hmm. June is when we're really going to have to hash. But right, right now, all they're doing is asking us to send over a budget. I understand that. Okay, I'm just but, I'm just making clear. What, what, those are the I understand we, we can send over whatever and then have a, a have the real yes. meat at yes. the end of the thing. I understand that. Oh yeah. I just have a problem starting off at 650 and a million five. Well, I've given you a scenario that drops that down to 244. We've gotten about 44 students to return since September. That's great. And we do anticipate. Um, I mean, they return it every day. Yeah. Some more discussion? Anybody have? 
I think just to reiterate what you're saying, I, I have a hard time with pulling from um, the health care trust and when it's something that's not going to be, you know, replenished and it's not a one-time thing, we're going to have to pull up with this money all the time. So I am hesitant to send over a budget, um, even though we're going to be rehashing it later. I feel bad that we're putting it on the commissioners to decide the steps and the percentage when. Oh, well, we are we're, not putting well, it on the, the money with just the totals, yeah, to with just the it. totals. Yeah, we're um, not. I, th I, th I don't think it has this budget hasn't. I mean, the commissioners' only issue they have is we're asking them for sixty-two million. $200,000. That's what we're asking them. The rest of this stuff is all up to us, and we're taking money for fund balance, ESMIC, which if we want to leave that in here, I just want everybody clear. I'm for, it, those, that money has to be earmarked to one-time cost, not a reoccurring cost. That's my position. And, and, and that's that? the only way that it could be mm -hmm. um, used from there. But again, it may not be feasible. So we don't know because we share that health insurance with the county and, and if they don't agree um, to all or some, then it's it's obviously, you know, gonna be hard for us to do that. Um, so, you know, you still have to look at the big, the big um, ideas are, or the big, you know, items on the table are compensation and the number of positions that will be reduced. Mm -hmm. And what's that estimate healthcare trust normally used for if it wasn't when you say a one time cost or it, it's it we're in a but I'm up, we're in a consortium with other counties. Oh, okay. And we pay it and I guess we're half self insured or so much self insured to right. a point. And we our, we've overpaid premiums over the course of X number of years. So there's a there's a balance there between us and the, you know our section. And so it can only be used to pay down premiums. Um, you want to go in and explain that, Ms. Towers? Right. So the request for the ESMIC Healthcare Trust would be just to reduce the premium payments going into FY22. That's why it's on the expenditure side. So it can only be paid to pay because we're paying that much in premiums, but it's still a reoccurring cost and long term. I mean, right. I mean, is that you know we can say it's not going there; it's going to pay premiums, but we next year have to pay this premium somehow. So I have a question. I'm looking at scenario four, where the re reduction and co consolidation of 15 open positions, 1.4. It's still using the same ESMEC healthcare trust. Uh, it, it takes the county. It, um, appropriation of MOE just over a dollar instead of the Kerwin proposed at 62.2. So it's a million dollars less from the county. It just, it, so it, we're it, having to make up that no matter what. Well, the county, the 61033 is what the county by law for us to get our uh, declining enrollment grant has to have is committed to do, and I think they are to that. So we honestly, so between one, between between two and four, the county appropriation is off by a million. The state aid is off. It's by, the same. state aid is the same. Well, down at the unrestricted is different. It's off. Then the projected 2020. Oh, that's the same. Yes. Okay. Just seeing how it, you know 1.4 with 15 open positions gone and retirement savings, um, we're still using the same ESMIC, but I see where it's we're making up for the million from this, the county not being there. Okay, thank you. I mean, I mean, it, it all boils down to this: we're we're not adding much to this budget at all. We're declining. We're losing a couple positions. What we have as a placeholder for compensation to uh, staff. That's where the that's where the increase is. Well, sir, we can all, always take it down. I mean, as as a placeholder, I prefer to go in and ask for it. Award. <laughs> see what we get um, instead I don't, of not asking for it. I don't have that number, um, Ms. Towers. Uh, the the one percent um, scenario of the just a salary increase, just the, the one number of one percent. We'll just divide four hundred five in half. I would think. It's oh, 2%. at the top. Yes, at the top. Correct. Take that out of. I think you had given it. So it'll be two hundred two. It'll be two hundred two. Mm -hmm. So just one percent increase at the top will be two oh two five fourteen seventy two. Thank you. Okay. That 
would solve your problem, sir. To going from 2% down to one? If you go from the 2.3 million that we have as a placeholder to 203,000. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were looking at 2% increase down to 1%. So the scenario, no, you no. just want 1%? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. So that- I apologize. That would be $681,087.75. $682,000 down from 2.3. scenario you're looking at I, I'm okay. I'm just making okay. I'm just putting I'm still looking at scenario number two okay but rearranging the numbers to instead of having uh, step this yeah the 2.3 million and a placeholder make it 681,000 as a placeholder removing the 405 0229 mm -hmm. taking the fund balance down and actually, um, if we left the fund balance at 650, then we could possibly do something with that as Met Healthcare, get that number down. I'm just trying. I'm just offering other suggestions, and you know, and trying to you know help Mr. Smith's anxiety level. So that we have it on the on the agenda as as a action item, but we could definitely sit on this for another week and we could sit on it. I think we need to give Dr. Kane direction because we we need to vote either next week and I don't think I mean we can talk this for another three weeks, but April the fifth or sixth yes. day is it? I mean it's the day before our April board meeting. Correct. Has to be presented to the commissioners. That's true. Ms. Towers, can I ask a quick question though? Since we're kind of on scenario number two, we're um, so if we're taking out the step and just do the one percent, you said was this about six hundred eighty-two thousand, correct? Yes. And then um, if we can drop if we drop the two percent to one percent for the top, it brings it to the half of the four hundred five. So we're saving about two point um, about a million and a half. Is that okay? which is, like you said, um, Ms. Harper, that's the health care trust. We could make adjustments in the health care trust if we left the fund balance at 650. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and um, get my laptop and pull up the scenario and work those numbers out and if you want me to. We could even increase the reduction of the open positions. I mean, it just uh, just to balance and At the same scenario as we're adding back our furlough day. If we don't add that back, it's two two seventy. But that furlough day is two things. It's both uh, what you need for uh, up, up, you know with our uh, teachers and staff, and it's money in their pocket, out of their pocket. If we don't put that back in, I th I, I misunderstood. I thought the furlough paid, day. Yeah, we did. We paid them. We, we paid because, that back. Yeah. So then I, I understand. Why is that on here then? Because we paid it back with COVID money. Okay. COVID money's not gonna be next year. So we anticipate that we, we, we'd furloughed them a day last year to save money, to balance our budget. And they were paid? From, from COVID. Okay, um, so we have to add this into the budget. So we have to add this into the budget. They were not hurt financially okay. because they got right. that we, back. We took the hit. Right, but we have to put it back in there. Thank you, thank you for clarification. And the variance report was because of? That was when the, we went through the um, budget book and we found some places where we could have experienced some savings. That was the 284, I think okay. it was. Right, when we looked yeah, at the, the five-year um, costs, the actuals, okay. we had um, to account for the special ed consortium increase, the non-public funds, 
an increase there as well. Those are things that we that went up, not down. Correct. And then we had that one with um, a non-special ed student having um, psychologist services too of 110. With the way this thing's proposed, I don't agree with it 100%, but when we use scenario, I definitely like it. And we got Kerwin coming down the pike. Right. You know, when we say step and 1% and 2% and all that, I would just like to say employee compensation and then depending on what money we use, how it could be either a one-time cost or it could be a reoccurring cost when we get down to the uh, final decisions later on. Does that make any sense? That's what, exactly what we're saying. We're saying what is your total compensation uh, dollar amount? For the placeholder. Right, for the yeah. placeholder. Not Don't worry about steps and stuff like well, that. I know, but it's up. It's on the top of this thing and I think when, right. people, when, when people see that and a staff sees that, they think that's what we're talking about. I just want to know there's another option on the table. That's an option, but there's another there could be another option to make it a one-time cost. The tuition and building use funds, are we sure about that number or is that based on past tuition? It, it's based upon a non-COVID environment, correct? Okay. Okay, so that's not, that's not in set in stone. Mm -mm. So you're talking about for a placeholder, Mr. Smith, 884,514 roughly as a placeholder for employee compensation? Yes, um, 883,603 is what it looks like. Thank you, 603. And, and that, what would that reduce to fund balance? How much fund balance would we be using then? using any of it you um, you would have to look for 225,313 more correct I wish two, three, three, two, and still using the ESMEC uh, zero on ESMEC yes. oh, zero on ESMEC right. I, I, I it, my numbers come up with five by 550,000 is that about right I am showing a placeholder of 883603 for salary, and then we still want to keep the county appropriation at 62.2? If we keep the county at 62.2. Oh, well, I'm under scenario one. Oh, if, if, we scenario take, if we take the, and scenario is with the salary increases of 23.29 and 405, we come up with 27, 2,734,000. In this case scenario, we look like that's what we put in it for a holding. Is that my correct number? No, because that's not what Ms. Harper was saying. I'm wondering if you're proposing something different because just, Ms. Harper proposed 683 plus the 202,515. So that's about 885,515 for compensation. And I know that Ms. Um, Towers was looking at uh, reducing the ESMIC to zero. Is that what you were saying? Okay. If I'm hearing correctly. Mm -hmm. So then the reduction of positions would have to go up. Mm -hmm. That would be back to five in the scenario number three, the five open positions and retirement savings at 596, roughly to cover. Is that right? Right. If we kept the same two open positions, the, re the reduction of two instead of the five, we'd be pulling 200,000 then from the ESMEC. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying that we need still is 200,000? Or fund balance. Or fund balance. Balance, Using number one, this 
Towers. Right. I okay. just went ahead and updated two as well. Okay. take us down to 1.3 in factors increasing the budget the placeholder would be 883-602 okay as meg at zero uh -huh. you're actually over now okay is that with using five positions or two actually using nine None. Using none. Nine. Really? None. 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 But still having some retirement savings. Yes. And is and is this at sixty two point two, or is this at sixty one? This is at the, uh, scenario two sixty two point. This is still at sixty two point two. Okay. And two, about two thirty five for fund balance. Uh, 650,000 for still 650 still 60, 650 650 okay um, if you want to keep the 650 there or if you and zero reduction in force or have some reduction in force and reduction in fund balance I mean I know if you it's want too to keep related scenario 2 at 3 313 855 I'll let you know what that is right here Would decrease the six hundred and fifty thousand. Let me just. What, do we have a five-year average of what our fund, what we end up with with a fund balance each year? Okay. Not the total. What each year each year comes off of? Right. We we had a fund balance slide too. Um, so let me just get back to this. If we put back in the reduction of two positions and retirement savings at the three hundred and thirteen thousand eight fifty five, mm -hmm. it reduces the six hundred and fifty to three twenty six nine eighty seven. That that's fund balance and and then the, and not touching the estimate trust. Zero, correct. Mm -hmm. Under four, tab four has fund balance, the trend, the last page. From 18 through 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's from 18. It was 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, 19 was a, about 3,000 more, so it's still 1.1. 1 .1. And then in 20, it went to 2.3. So we really haven't. We've been pretty. We haven't had. A, we haven't increased our fund balance the last couple of years, except. Up this past year. This past year. We saw a big Past year we have. Yeah. But the other years we haven't. Right. I mean, if I saw every year, not and not every year is different. When summer colder. I mean, when you start talking to three or four hundred thousand, that can be a bad winter or a good, you know, depending on which way you go. And this year is going to be completely out of bounds because there'll be costs in some areas and probably savings in others, but it's not going to. It's not normal. Okay. So can, can we go over this real, just real, real quickly? So I have. So this case scenario, you got the fund balance down to three twenty six. Mm -hmm. Twenty six thousand nine eighty seven. Okay. My, it, my page is starting to look like a road map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the the placeholder would be at 883-602. Uh, the budget requests are still the same, hourly wage, the projected transportation increase, keeping the reduction of two open positions and the retirement savings, keeping the furlough day and the variance report, which you can't do anything about, but you are removing the ESMEC Healthcare Trust to zero. 
fund balance would be 326,987. And hopefully the 662, two. And if, and if you look at what we did with fund balance last year, plus our furlough day, we're higher than that. So we, you know, we're going back in the right direction. I, I think it just, it makes everyone a little more um, uh, acceptable of taking out the ESMEC Healthcare Trust. Not just us, but the county commissioners as well. Ms. Towers, that was a reduction of how many positions? Two. two. Bill two. Yes. Okay. Plus retirement savings. Plus the nine. Okay. Okay. And two, you know, we always we need people. And do you feel? I mean, is that those two people? I know you'll decide. One is like, one is empty. One is empty now, so it's and it doesn't it's need to be filled. And uh, we can live without it. Well, we've been contracting it out, so we have money. In I look when we contract something, that's just pretty much a lot of times a wash, isn't it? I mean, sometimes. Pretty, pretty much. I, I mean, mean you know, th you're not this is not quite a wash, but um, yeah, I mean, it's vacant. Um, that sounds a lot better to me than we were before. So the, the placeholder is going to um, be 883602 and that's assuming right now that we're talking a million two or something over you know we're asking a cat which we should i mean if this is what we need this is what we need that's what our job is to do is to, is to request funding but that's also asking the county you know for more than that so i mean just keep in mind everybody right and based upon the projection that was given to dr king last year yeah. I understand. And, and yesterday right yeah i, I you know and you know it's it's interesting um, revenue for the state's not down as much as most people think because in the 2006 and seven everybody got hit but the big wage earners got hit the major the people that are get, getting hit now which is just as bad are not people probably paying the taxes so the higher income people are still paying it so we haven't we're not I don't think we're going to see the hit like we did in 2006 and seven um, that we're going to do now we might in another year who knows what's going to happen but you know. Okay. And to your point too, Kerwin's around the corner too as well um, to, to get that 10 year uh, plan in place too as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, you know, I, well, that's a lot of moving parts for everybody to agree on to me, but not just, I mean, we're just a little cog. We're Queen Anne's County. We're not the major players, but exactly. I mean, when, you know, one, one of it sounds good and the other one sounds, you know, and then everybody starts looking at their own scenario. That's going to be a real. Yes. Uh, one thing that was brought up in the meeting, which I'm very excited about is a uh, possible meeting with uh, a county commissioner and with Ms. Moran next week to take a look at projecting out to FY30. Mm -hmm which um, for county funding. So it, um, it kind of puts everybody on the same page looking ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, and there's no, I mean, cause there's, there's, you know, there's always a few little humps, but you know, we kind of, we kind of can tell you where you're going to be each year. I appreciate that offer. <laughs> well, we had that back in 2013, 14 and 15 or four, four, 13, 14, 15, where the county commissioners, they, this is how much they were uh, allocating to the uh, board of ed and, and made it, I mean, it was what it was, so that's what we had to make do with. Okay. Do we have any other questions on this? So what's what scenario are we calling this? Five? I, I think we're, we had eight before. Right? I mean, call this, this, this number nine. Nine. That, that, Okay, let's call this. Let me ask you a hard let's question. Let's call us the, the big one. This is the night. Could, 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 could you? Can we see it? Like hard copy, see it? Yeah, I don't know which email this is. Oh, let me. Is there any way you could just draw this up so each one of us have a copy of it and look at it? Because we got something else we can do Absolutely. until that. If you could do that, and then we could maybe get this over with this evening. Mm -hmm. And then we could all look right in front of us. Um, and we can go over a couple of things between, you know, while you're doing I'll, that. I'll email it to you, to everyone, or put it on the screen. Yeah, email's great. Is, okay. is everybody hooked up? Or I'll, I can print it well, out. I'm just yeah, printing it out. Yeah, yeah, if there's not much trouble, just. Right, we can go to capital. Out. We want to talk about capital next. Can we get back to this one. Okay. The one thing I heard, and I think Dr. Kane 
is the county, and we all asked a question, this building compared to the Central Middle School, um, and when Dr. Kane presented this, I think, you know, there's, there's some scenarios in there, do we renovate, build, oh, sorry, Carla, build, but there is X number of dollars have to be put into it just to maintain its operation today. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the commissioners, they need to take a serious look at this building and the other building at some point. Because uh, I think you've made all the recommendations. It's just what direction we go. I mean, maybe you can fill in a little, I mean, I think. Have we scheduled a meeting with them to take a trip through both buildings? We're in the process of doing that, yes. Okay. That's how we got Graysonville's addition on. Yeah, that meeting hadn't been scheduled. Has it hadn't been scheduled yet? No. But we had good options. Dr. Kane, and Wednesdays we're not in school, and I think four o'clock you mentioned we're out of school. Uh, we'll I have think, better yeah. access to classrooms and. But you know, I think you know the, the the dollars. It looks like to me to renovate or build are about the same but you're probably get a more useful product by building. From we're gonna get a more useful product. We're gonna get more energy efficiency. We're going to get another 40 years out of a building mm -hmm. at minimum. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, to bring this building, if we were to renovate, we still can't completely bring it up to code because we are not code compliant between our first and second floor. If we renovate, unless we gut the entire building, there's really nothing we can do about that. I mean, and that's a, I mean, I think you're presenting both options to our chair. We did, we, we, we or we will, um, just like we did here, mm -hmm. so that one or the other is still an option if one gets canceled out. We just didn't want, mm -hmm. you know, the answer to be no for one and the other not to be there. And the number that, that we need just to keep this place in a functional next year would be, what, two million? Based on our facility assessment that we did in 2016, mm -hmm. in three years we needed five million, in five years we needed 10 million. So we're very close, and that's just to bring it up to par and to continue to maintain it. So that's the deferred maintenance that has happened over the course of the years with this building. $10 million to bring it up to where it should be with current codes, with you know current plumbing and HVAC, roofing. There are a number of major problems in the building. Um, when you look at that and the overall cost of a $14 million building that then will get you much less cost per month as well. That's why we took a hard look at that and, and why we did the feasibility study. But as it is now, it's um, getting the plans for a building, you know, I've been on three building committees. It takes two years in the planning, one year to get ready, and then, you know, you, we're three to four years out before we even break ground. This building could go much faster. Okay. Because we aren't dealing with necessarily, we would treat this more like an office building. So there would be some flexible use in terms of educational spaces and potential for use after hours, some other programs that we potentially could house in this space, but it's an office building. So it has the ability to go much faster than a school planning project. Would. But the county has to pay for all of it. That's correct. That's, least, that's the big caveat there. At least the programs that we have indicated would be included are not eligible for state funding. So it would be county only contributions. No state piece to that. If the Rise Academy goes in there, would that. Could that change some of the dynamics to make it? It could, it could. There are some other pieces of that to think about. Right now, Arise Academy is not considered its own entity. Those students belong to their home high schools. So therefore, there are some logistics at the state level that if we are now considering that its own school, we would have to look at some curriculum items as well. So that, that brings another piece of it. Um, when we looked at it before, I believe the calculations, and they've changed within the last year, the calculation was about a million dollars, maybe 1.5 that we'd be eligible for if we were to include students. And that would have to be full-time use. We would have to satisfy all the requirements of the state to consider that a school. And we would have to have the ability to feed those students. Um, what we do now is a satellite program that 
we bring food into those students, we would have to have a really good plan for how we would accomplish that in another building too. But the presentations that were shared with us at some point, the blueprints, a new building, and the, the revisions to this building, the county commissioners have seen those or that will be shared with them again? We, we've we shared that document okay, so with them. We have not done a full presentation to them. We did meet with the Centerville, the town of Centerville planning committee because they would be part of approving a new building and we wanted to get their thoughts and their feedback as part of the feasibility study. So we did do that. We shared the information with the county commissioners. We have not presented to them specifically on that project. Okay. And, and have, have those to go. been shared with our new members? So the feasibility study is included on the question and answer document that Jane has been preparing with all of the budget questions, anything that's come up. We've included the educational facilities master plan. We've included the CIP, our capital improvement plan that we submit every year, as well as a feasibility study. So they're all there for your review under documents in the Google Drive? Um, no, it's actually a link that's attached to that spreadsheet. So you'll see the name of it and then the link to access. And, and I don't know if this board's taken a hard scenario on which one to go with. It's more or less, here are the options, because the county also has the, 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 the plus or minus of owning this building once we move out. And that can be, that's not our issue. I mean, I feel it's not part of our issue, but it's an issue they need to consider. It is one of the other large issues that we have to think about is if we're reno renovating this building, what are we gonna do? where does our staff go? And that's another big expense, a really big expense, because we would have to relocate everyone for nine months. And that's gonna factor into that project. If we were to build off site, we it's don't have that issue. We we prepare the new building. And there's a cost and to that. Everyone, there is a cost to that. And I think that's the same as the Central Middle School issue. If we renovate it, the students are going to be there at some point. I mean, I'm, I, when I say that, I mean in the summertime you do a lot of renovation, but you still during the regular school year. Or if you build new, and all the numbers I've always seen is renovation and new are pretty close to each other. Potentially. There are some factors that once we take a look at the feasibility study could affect that. Um, building footprint is gonna be one of those. And as we've talked about before, our projections are not showing in the next seven years that we would have as many students as what that building is currently rated for. So we would anticipate the state is only gonna offer enough funding for what we expect to see, not what we currently have. So we have to consider if we wanna make that building footprint any smaller. That's one of the things that we would be taking a look at um, because the county commissioners then would have to put in the additional amount if we wanted to keep the building. But what's middle school, 650? It's it's in the low 600s is 600. what it's rated for right See, now. And that's not how it used to be. They used to have it to, they would do, they would build a building to what was the population was at that time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that what happened time. with Kent Island. That's what happened with Mattapeak. When we opened up Kent Island High School, it was only built for a thousand, not even a thousand kids, and we and we put fifteen hundred in it the in very, very first day. So yeah. they, they only build for what the numbers are at that time. So it's kind of weird, interesting that they're now looking at projections rather than the current attendance. Well, it's, and I can tell you, we did that with Graysonville Elementary School with the addition we were able to project what our population was going to be out seven years. We actually just had a meeting today and it looks like they're gonna be focusing more on five years for the construction. And so we would build out to what we see in five years. And there's gonna be a reduction in the town of Centerville. That's what we are anticipating right now, unless something were to happen in the next year or two where we would see a large increase. But right now in working with the planning department, they're not seeing that. Yeah. At least not that would give us that great a number of students. So there's not a new students. development on Northbrook or something to be expected. And even when we do, we look at about half of a student per household. So if you have a 400 home development, we're only looking at 200 students and then you look at them spread across elementary, middle and high, it's not a huge number per school. So it breaks it down even a little bit. And, and you know, Centerville's like close to capacity at, at sewer. I mean, you know, most of these towns in Kent Island is, so I don't see any major 
you know, unless we start having apartment buildings, high-rise apartment buildings, that would be the only thing that would be a game changer. And there's there's height restrictions even in towns. So I don't see us, you know. Well, we're going to have an increase on Kennelland because of all the houses that are being built on Route 8 South. I mean, that's it's gone crazy down there. And we continue to keep in touch with the planning department about that just to see that we are still in the range that we believe to be on Route 8. Um, there are some build outs that are happening specifically and additions. So homes that weren't eligible at one time for additional bathrooms, now with the sewer project, have been mm -hmm. able to do that. And that, that can add so. on, you did, you know, it's a two bedroom home and also there's three bedrooms, that's a family and that's usually children. Yep. So at one time there was actually an elementary school mm -hmm. slated for Route 8 South. Yes, um, there was. And, and it was on the books for five or six years um, and just recently got taken off. Yes, so. the state actually asked us because yeah. they were not seeing a change in our projections over seven years they asked us to remove that at this time right on we just stuck centerville middle on it <laughs> any other questions on that on capital furniture replacement yes and cafeteria three hundred eighty thousand. Yes. did we put that in we put that in for numerous years haven't we we have every year yes i mean that is just something that from what i've gotten emails from uh, pictures <laughs> and I'm sure you know our uh, maintenance department not I don't get it from these part but you know welding stuff and you know putting things together um, and even the other day I think we were discussing Mattapeak elementary or middle it's 20 years old now yeah. I mean you know and I you just, it just goes and you know furniture and tables and chairs get abused not abused get used um, I think that's something we got to really harp, you know, I mean, that's something that almost needs to be a, a you talking about a placeholder every year. If we would do it every year, we wouldn't be in such a jam. But I just hope that does not, I mean, I'd, I'd be very passionate about get, keeping that in. I think everybody's gotten calls on that. Mm -hmm. I believe this is an area of the budget that we reduced. On the, on the furniture? In some portions, didn't we? No. Oh. Not for capital. Capital, we were we uh, were cut about two million dollars last year. And then we reduced okay. it, maybe, but it wasn't. It was the other budget yeah. we did. Okay. And that should be in capital. I would think furniture is a very. It should be an operate. It should be a capital thing because it's just you know. And I, you know. At Queens County High School is using the original cafeteria tables to that building. I saw Centerville Middle. Mm -hmm. The same tables I used when I was in high school. And so, they have been repaired and repaired and repaired. Mm -hmm. And welded and, and yeah. it's detached from the wall. And mm -hmm. I mean, when I went there, they were still part of the wall that you dropped down. Now they're independent of that, but still being used. I think we all agree that's something that is in dire need that, you know, has been neglected in the past. And even classroom furniture, we've talked before that the easiest way for update to update our classrooms right now to 21st century learning is the flexibility of furniture and technology. That's the easiest way. Yeah, because I guess yeah, a desk that was used 20 years ago is irrelevant to what's what you need today. The good way to get that is to build a new building. And you get all new stuff. But we still have to, but we still have to pay furniture. I mean, I think uh, it's up to the uh, local yeah, to but pay. It comes for out it. of the building fund. It does. I will say that the state is in the process of discussing payment for furniture, fixtures, finishes, um, which is something that we haven't seen. In the in past, a very we didn't time. get that. No, and design fees, oh, which wow. is a huge help. Mm -hmm. it, it was two million on Stevensville Middle School. And it's going to be several years before this comes into play. I would hope that Centerville Middle School has started to see progress before I believe that we'll see that come to fruition. But it's a hope. Well, and just uh, with, I know we talked a little bit about the energy savings with the programs. I know that Queen Anne's County just took on um, Nexamp. Um, which I think is a 10% reduction in, uh, is that something that the school system, are we piggybacking on that? Next amp, I'm- uh, It's a solar farm and so oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a 10%, you, I think you get a 10% reduction in your, and I yes. know that Queen Anne's County is part of that now. They just, they sent that um, news flash out. So I'm assuming that we could do something with that as well to save. Well, yes, so what we do, there is a solar farm that is at Centerville Middle School. I believe that's the one that you're addressing that was recently added. Yeah, I don't think that was it, but I'll, I'll okay. send something to you. It was, okay. a, it was a news Hold flash. On. Next amp is a, there, you invest in these solar farms and then you get a reduction in your 
Well, that, that, that's, that's, so ours is between Centerville Middle School and Queen uh, Anne's County High School. That's We have a 20-year lease with Solar City that we've signed back in 2015, 2016. Yes. So that's we, the school system already had that before the county did this. Yeah. And it's actually battery storage. So we store some of the energy that's collected there and it goes to Centerville Middle School as well as to Kent Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School. So there's a percentage that's allowed through the energy provider to allow um, the solar to encapsulate. And, and so we're at the max for all three buildings. Okay, on the capital, does anybody else have any? And my, my, I mean, I have. I, sorry, well, I'm no. just. I agree with you. I think that we need to focus on the furniture. If we had to mm -hmm. have anything give, I'm. You know, I've already talked about. I'm not big on new vehicles. Um, for the cost, I would much rather see it go to the furniture piece. I'm with you on that part. Yeah, I'm with you, um, Ms. Bennett. If, if I was going to see anything come out, it would be the bucket truck. It would be a few thing, a few items. Do we want to talk about that now? Do you want to hash through that, the well, capital? That, that, I mean, some of that stuff, I mean, we need to present it to them, to, right. but it's going to be cut. I mean, maybe, maybe. You know we'll it's going to be cut. Want, but I think I think those decisions you have to meet, I don't think we need to start right now. I think that could be a thing at our. So do you propose just going ahead and voting in the capital budget and see where it goes? I, I have no thing. I mean, I voiced my, my thing that I think, and this is our capital budget and we've got furniture in there. I'm just saying right now, I'm passionate about the furniture. Uh, this building here, I can't, I mean, there's other ideas as far as like the middle school and tying that in with the board office and some other things later, but I think the commissioners need to be presented with this. Here are our options. They need probably need to know more than what they know right now to make a decision. Um, but it, you know, we're getting to the point where do we put money into this building or are we going to do something new? I mean, and you know, we, we, I mean, that's their, their thing and then they'll bring it back to us and then we make a decision on what we get. But it's really their call because they're going to have to fund the entire building. Yes. So they have to find out. Well, that's why it's, it's, it's that in that capital budget to do that. And there's a couple of options. I think even that one thing you said, three million can come out because you've got both all the options in there. But if you pick one, they can reduce it here. If you pick this one, you know, it's going to, it's a little bit of a moving part. So there's, you know, we're not, and I really think over the last couple of years, the commissioners are the ones that have really pushed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. either renovating this building or building a new one. It, I mean, we certainly requested to keep this building uh, up to date, which like you said, it's not going to be up to date completely, but you know, the commissioners asked that question. So that now it's up to them to sit there and, you know, say which way they, you know, what they want to go. And then we can work with them to see if we make it all together. And I would like to add that we have provided the commissioners with a priority list for our capital budget. And we're going to share that with you in the same document that Jane has created, um, just to give everyone an idea of where, when the funds come through, what we really want to make sure it's spent on. Mm -hmm. You can send us that list. Mm -hmm. And like you, you know, the, the rubber meets the road after we present our budget to the commissioners find out what funding's happening both, you know, and there's, a, there's a, a few moving things that we don't know yet. So is everybody uh, okay with the capital? Okay, now we're back to Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Is that what it is? Is it? Yeah, scenario nine. Thank you, ma'am. She's on top. <laughs> okay, so what we have before you, scenario nine, uh, county appropriations on the right, 62.2. The state money as follows to bring a projected revenue at 107, 250,000, 514, projecting to use, and I just rounded it to 330. 
on the right hand side with expenditures, a placeholder for salaries, 885,000. Zero in healthcare trust, balancing it to the revenue at 107, 205, 514. I'd like to make a point. Um, the other funding, tuition and building use is not set in stone. That's a pre-COVID number. That's, I mean, that's us renting out buildings, getting tuition in. I mean, that's, again, we may be looking for 440,000 come the end of next year. Just to put that out there, make sure, I'm sure everybody knows that. Well, it, but if, yeah, we are, but if we're back to normal in September with full day schools. Oh yeah, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of, lot of. And that's, that's, you know, I mean, that's our goal to get us. There's a lot of moving parts, but I just want uh, yeah, that, that to could, sure that could be a, that could that. be a major issue if we were in the same predicament we are right now. Correct. But. Or, or, you know, we open up schools and we get to do a lot of other things. And so just making sure everybody's understood that point. And, and you know, thanks the, and for doing this, Ms. Towers. Sorry. So thank what? you. That was a quick turnaround. Thank thanks you. so much, Ms. Towers. And in this, in this, using this fund balance are 330, which I think we, I, I don't, it is less than it is last year because we used a fund balance plus a furlough day. We're getting that furlough day back, and only, and the fund balance will only be used at 330 in this projection. Any questions? I had updated. Dr. Kane's presentation, so I'm not sure if we want to go over that or just share it. Uh, if Ms. Wright can bring it up, we can. Just to, put this, just to put this on the screen, you mean? Yes, I actually took out scenario nine and just did the placeholder amount in here to be sent over. So your suggestion we put it up for everybody to see? Just to see the correction. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wright, I'm not sure how to bring, mm. I emailed you the Google. Do you mind I'm emailing sorry. it to everyone too? Yes. Do you have time? The two updates is a revision date for today's date on slide one. <coughs> and then going down to uh, factors for the budget here, you want a placeholder under compensation of $885,000. And then removal of scenario two. It also, and it takes out the other, uh, has uh, the health care. Does everybody? So you have, you have number nine on here? I, I didn't incorporate the slide. I just did it as a placeholder here. Did you want scenario nine in, in there? Well, this, I mean, this is what That's really Dr. Weird. Kane proposed us. This is the changes we're suggesting at this point. So this is what Dr. Kane would work off of mm -hmm. when she goes to commissioners for funding. Mm -hmm. So I think that's prudent to have, you know, up there to so say, we, you know, we're voting. I mean, this is our nitty gritty stuff, but that's what it's going to come to. I uh, think if that's what the board so desires. Are there any other questions? Any discussion? call for a, do we need a motion to get this? Well, we go into our, are we going into our current action item right now? Is that where we're going? Okay, we, we move down to that. Hold on, bro. I'm sorry. Oh. Is, there, is there any more discussion on this right now for Jane? No. And we've discussed uh, operating. Okay, thank you.
Now we're into current action items, both operating and capital budgets we had discussion on. Um, I make a motion to accept scenario number nine for the operating budget and the proposed capital budget that was presented on March 3rd to the board members to be sent over to the county commissioners on April 5th. I second. I have a motion as first and second. Any other discussion? Ms. Wright, could you call? Yes, board members, please respond when I called your name. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Schifanelli? Yes. Ms. Morset? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have five in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Towers. Thank you. Okay. Um, future meetings, I guess the next question we will have is March the 17th. Uh, does the board feel that's necessary? Point of information, Mr. Smith, the um, second, the third Wednesday of the month is in a, the board's handbook that ha has to be a meeting on that day, unless, like you say, we let the, you know, the public know that we're not meeting next month and then we can get rid of it at, by a motion tonight. Well, yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to bring up. We've met our regular meeting on the third. We did meet on the 10th, which is today. Uh, we're happy to come back if there's anything. If not, then we can have a motion to, you know, amend our thing. I we do to... not have items for uh, another budget work session. And Dr. King, do you think it's prudent that we have a meeting anyway with the reopening of schools update or? Well, the Wait schools are opening up. I mean, what? I, I don't see the necessity for okay. another meeting. Principals will be contacting parents with their schedules. We're on the regular bus, uh, pre-COVID, I should say, bus uh, tiers <laughs> one and two. And um, I think we're moving forward. I mean, right now, uh, March of 22nd is the day to go stay hybrid, A, A, B, B, mm -hmm. full days. Um, so that's gonna happen. Um, like Dr. Kane says, if there's questions, parents need to talk to the principal. Um, as president, I don't see we need a meeting on March the 17th. We can uh, post that we're not gonna have it and move this as our middle meeting for a work session. That's if I hear a motion. So I do I have a, I make a motion to remove from the future meeting events, March 17th board work session. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Okay. So we will not be meet, meeting again until April 7th? Correct. Correct. Okay. April 7th will be our regular board meeting and April 21 will be our work session. Um, and we do have on April the 6th, Dr. Kane will be presenting uh, our budget to the county commissioner. So I don't know what time that is, but I guess I'll get in touch with you at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Uh, the motion to go to executive closed session. Yeah, can I make one uh, comment? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Any, any board members have anything else for the evening? Sure. So. Uh, Ms. Bennett and I visited uh, Bayside Elementary School yesterday as part of our uh, orientation. We met with uh, Principal uh, Welsh and uh, had a very enlightening tour. We saw the hybrid um, uh, classroom instruction in effect, you know, by the teachers. We stopped in maybe four or five different uh, classrooms. Uh, very dynamic teaching that was going on. Of course, um, uh, half the class was in the, in the room. The other half was uh, virtual. Um, I can tell that she's a very admired principal. Uh, yesterday was her birthday, and uh, I heard a lot of uh, happy birthdays, uh, well-wishers uh, in the classrooms, the kids, and uh, a couple of them on, online were actually uh, saying happy birthday virtually. Dr. Kane was with us. Um, it was a very enjoyable uh, uh, tour, but more importantly, it was very uh, informative as well. So. Um, We've got uh, other, I think all the elementary schools have been programmed, programmed in for uh, Ms. Bennett and I and uh, for the next month. So we look forward to doing that. Um, 
Nancy Krim was there as well, and I asked her, she said she's a teacher specialist, I asked her what that was. And by the end of that hour and a half tour, I was very clear what a teacher specialist does, her responsibilities, and uh, what a critical position that is. Every so, day. yeah, all. Of it. So, thanks, uh, Dr. Kane, for getting Thank us you. in there, and and uh, Miss Wright as well. And that's it. Okay. Any other comments from the board, or Dr. Kane, or any? Okay. Motion, motion to move the executive session. Pursuant, uh, pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the board to meet in an executive closed session to discuss any personal personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and to consult with counsel. Second. I have a first and a second. Any discussion? All vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you.